What is going on guys? It's Hayden with Road Racing 360 and today's video is going to be talking about kind of an interesting concept. So what I'm going to do today is break down the MotoGP field and I'm going to reset all the teams and riders and the way that uh, we're going to decide what riders are on what team is by a hypothetical draft. Uh, so I got the idea after watching a video uh, from Tom OF1, and he set the Formula 1 field uh, using a draft system for each team. So if you're not familiar with the draft system, the way it works is the worst team from last season uh, will choose first, and we'll go through all the teams in reverse order, and they'll each draft a rider. Uh, and obviously for each team, there'll be two picks, so we'll go through the list twice, and that will decide what our theoretical MotoGP draft would look like for the 2021 season. Kind of ground rules for this video. I'm only using riders that are racing in the MotoGP series for 2021, or maybe a couple MotoGP uh, riders that don't have a ride this year, but have ridden uh, it last year. I'm not gonna go and choose any World Superbike riders, uh, any riders from any domestic series, just for simplicity's sake. As cool as it would be to see Jonathan Ray on a Repsol Honda or something like that, it's just not gonna happen in this video, I'm sorry. And since we're going in reverse order from last year's team standings, the way the pick order is going to go is first is going to be Aprilia, second is Avinci Ducati, third is Repsol Honda, crazy, I know, fourth is LCR Honda, fifth is Tech 3 KTM, four, uh, sixth is uh, Monster Energy Yamaha factory team, seventh is Primac Ducati, eighth is the factory Ducati team, Ninth is the Red Bull KTM factory team. Tenth is Patronus Yamaha. And then finally, an 11th is going to be Suzuki Extra. And with the first pick of round one in the 2021 MotoGP draft for the Aprilia Racing Team Grissini, it's got to be Marc Marquez. Uh, if you're Aprilia, I think the one man that can turn your bike into a consistent podium contender and a race winner is Marc Marquez. He's just head and shoulders above the rest of the MotoGP paddock. When the guy's healthy, he's better than anyone in the world and consistently tames the very difficult to ride Honda and just smokes everybody most of the time. So if you're a player, there's no other rider that I pick with a first, first choice but Marc Marquez. Pick two of round one for Vinci Ducati is Maybe a surprise to some people, but it's going to be Jack Miller. And the reason I picked Jack Miller is because he was really impressive last season. He was probably, I think he was the best Ducati rider. Uh, he has shown that he deserves a spot on a factory squad like he has earned in reality. And so if I'm the Vinci Ducati squad who's getting more support from Ducati, I'm going to choose Jack Miller because he's a guy that I think can take my bike to the podium. And uh, as, as long as he continues to progress, he can win races. Moving on to pick three for the Repsol Honda team. First of all, I have to say it's pretty crazy that Repsol Honda was the third worst team in MotoGP last year. But without Marc Marquez, the one man who consistently can wrestle that Honda around and bring in race wins, they just didn't have it. So with that, I'm gonna choose Pola Spargro. And the reason I choose Pole is he is an extremely talented young rider. Anyway, Pole has been able to ride a bike that is probably the most similar to the Honda, which is the KTM, and he consistently was able to fight for podiums and came close to a race win a couple times. And with Marc Marquez being off the board already, I think pole makes the most sense for Repsol Honda. With pick four of the first round for LCR Honda, I am going with Taka Nakagami. And I think that's going to be a surprise to a lot of people. But the reason I'm picking Taka is because he made a lot of uh, big strides this season. He was the most consistent Honda rider. Put it on pole, and I think he is just a couple pieces away from being a consistent podium finisher and battling and getting a race win. I think we saw this year that he has the potential to do it, but he needs to put everything together to make it happen. So with another year of development 
And on a bike that he already knows, with a team he already knows, I think it makes sense for LCR to pick him up and keep developing him and progressing him. Pick five, round one for Tech 3 KTM. If I'm Tech 3, I am selecting the man that brought me my first win in MotoGP, Miguel Oliveira. It makes sense. He knows the KTM, he knows the team, and he's already proven that he can win on the bike. I mean, look at the last round where he just dominated the whole weekend, finishing on pole and then running away with the race victory. It doesn't make sense for me to pick anybody else if I'm Tech 3. Pick six for Monster Energy Yamaha, the factory Yamaha squad. I'm going to pick Franco Morbidelli. Franco was the most consistent Yamaha rider last year, won three times, finished second in the championship, and you got to think that was with the issues that Yamaha had with the motor. Had they been able to figure some of that out and uh, prevented a, the DNFs that he had, then Franco could have possibly been the champion in 2020. Pick seven for Premac Ducati is Alex Rins. I know there's still some good riders like Joe and Mir, Fabio, and Maverick on the board, but Alex has been really consistent. He's been one of the guys that has been able to beat Mark Marquez in a head-to-head -head battle, and I think his style would, would still work well on the Ducati. Next pick, pick eight for the factory Ducati squad is gonna be Fabio Cordero. Fabio has shown that with a consistent and a good bike, he can battle for the win and he can win races. Now, he had such an inconsistent year last year, and I don't think that's all Fabio's fault. I think a lot of that has to do with the bike uh, that Yamaha gave him being somewhat inconsistent. So if D Ducati can put a good bike underneath him, then there's no reason why he can't win more races. He's been able to battle head-to-head -head with Marc Marquez, and while... Mark's injury last year kind of uh, took away some of the battles that we were hoping for between those two. I think uh, he could turn it around on good machinery and win races and win championships for Ducati. Pick nine, going to the factory Red Bull KTM team. If I'm KTM, I'm going to continue on with Brad Bender. And the reason I'm picking Brad is because he showed the potential he has by cutting through the field at Brno and w taking KTM's first MotoGP win. It makes sense with such a young rider that showed such promise in his rookie year to keep going. He knows the bike, he knows the team, and he's been part of that KTM program for so long, it makes sense that KTM's gonna keep going with him. Now moving on to the 10th pick, the first round for Patronus Yamaha. I'm going to choose Joe and Mir, and it's kind of crazy that the champion from this last season is still on the board coming into the 10th pick, but for one reason or another, I thought other riders might be better for uh, some of the previous picks. So, for a for a super satellite team like the Patronus Yamaha squad, uh, I think it'd be a good place for Joe and Mir. And with the final pick of round one, maybe another surprise that he's still there for the Suzuki X-Star team is Maverick Vinales. And the reason I have him so far down is because for other bikes like the KTM and the Honda, and maybe, I suppose even Ducati, I think there are other better picks for one reason or another. And I think him going to Suzuki would be a match made in heaven. And I know he has ridden Suzuki before, and since he's left to go to Yamaha, that bike has just gotten better. Okay, so that concludes round one. Let me know what surprise picks you might have found and uh, what you might have picked differently uh, had you been drafting. Back to the top with the Aprilia Racing Team Grissini. If I'm Aprilia and my current and past rider, Alicia Spargo, is still on the board, I want to pick him up. And so that's my pick for the first round, uh, first pick round two. I think the older Spargo brother is one of the more underrated riders. I think he's somewhat underappreciated. And uh, I think the fact that he knows the Aprilia better than anybody has helped develop it, uh, makes sense for him to continue. All right, back to the Vinci Ducati team for round two, pick two. If I'm them, I'm going to pick up Johan Zarco. Johan has shown he's for real with his performances last year. Qualified on pole, finished on the podium with a third tier Ducati team. And seeing that they're getting more support from Ducati, I think it makes sense to pick up Johan, a guy who's been able to ride their bikes 
put it on the podium and sort of uh, revamp himself after the kind of weird situation that left him leaving KTM in the middle of the season. Coming to pick three of round two, back to the Repsol Honda team. This is the first pick of a MotoGP free agent, I suppose, and it's Andrea De Vicioso. Dovi has ridden for Repsol Honda in the past. <clears throat> I don't want to say he knows the bike because he's been with Ducati for so long. Yes, well, he might not have a ride in reality for 2021. I can see Honda wanting a proven rider. And pairing him with Paul Espargaro gives you two strong guys uh, that I think can consistently fight at the front. Now round two pick four for the LCR Honda team is their actual rider for 2021, Alex Marquez. Now, while Alex sort of struggled at the beginning and left a lot of his critics saying, I told you so at the beginning of the 2020 season, I think he started to prove him wrong by some of his performances, especially uh, what we saw at Aragon. For pick five of round two, back to Tech 3 KTM, I'm choosing Jorge Martin. Now, Jorge Martin is a rider that's been under the KTM program for many years now, and he's kind of the one that got away. Uh, they wanted to keep him within their program uh, this last year, but due to sort of the weird carousel of rider contracts and signings, he ended up getting away to Ducati. So he's a rider that if I'm KTM, this is my second shot. Going back to the Monster Energy Yamaha factory team with pick six, I'm going to choose Peko Bagnaia. And while you might think kind of an odd pick considering his 2020 season wasn't that successful. I think a lot of that had to do with the, the fact that he was plagued by injury this last year. We've seen with a healthy Pekka that he can battle for the podium and considering he trains with and is part of the same program that other Yamaha riders are in the VR46 Academy, it makes sense that you choose Pekko and allow him to develop on a bike that is really friendly to young guys uh, that are getting into MotoGP. Pick seven, going back to Pramac Ducati. I'm selecting Danilo Petrucci. And of the riders left, I think Danilo's a really good option. He's ridden with that team before. He's been under Ducati for, I mean, shoot, for darn near forever at this point. Uh, and he's shown that while he's somewhat inconsistent, he can win races. When it's his day, he's been able to beat Dovizioso and Marquez straight up. Pick eight for Factory Ducati. I'm going to choose another rookie, Enea Bastianini. Now, the 2020 Moto2 champion is on his way to a promising career in the class, and I think he's a good pickup as a second rider for Ducati. Now, Ducati, with this pick, would pair him with Fabio Cordararo, and while they'd have two young guys, which may, uh, which may prove a little bit of difficulty in development, I think uh, the guys that lead that team, as well as a good test rider in Michele Piro, will allow that to not be so much of an issue. On to pick nine, back with the factory KTM team. If I'm factory KTM, I'm choosing another young guy with Luca Marini. Now this is another team, just like the factory Ducati squad, that's gonna have two young riders, but I think they're both really talented and are gonna prove that they know what it takes. Uh, I think this pick somewhat makes sense because KTM, like I said earlier, has proven that they're a good bike that a rookie can succeed on in their beginning season. And if they can consistently provide a bike that suits uh, all track styles a little bit better than they have in the past, then I think Luke is gonna succeed and do well with the factory KTM team. Back to Patronus Yamaha with pick 10. If I'm Patronus Yamaha, I have to pick Valentino Rossi. And I know some of you Rossi doubters are doubting the old man, but I would like to point out that of the 15 races last season, Rossi only actually finished seven of them. And of those seven that he finished, he finished in the top five and four of them, including a podium. So while he is old, much older than most of the other racers, when he does finish, he does pretty well. And with the final pick of the 2021 MotoGP draft for Team Suzuki X-Star is Iker Lekawono. Now, Iker mightily impressed with his uh, 2019 Moto2 season. And while he might have struggled a little bit in his rookie season, uh, I'm not going to hold that against him. I think with a good bike like Suzuki, which is the best bike in the paddock, with a team that has shown uh, it's good for young riders, 
I think it makes sense for the pairing there. I think Suzuki has what it takes with the bike and the team, and uh, choosing a young guy like Iker uh, could prove to uh, repeat what they did with Joe and Mir and turn a young guy into a race winner, consistent race front runner, and potentially a champion. And that concludes my 2021 MotoGP draft. Let me know below what you guys think about some of my picks, what you have do would have done differently, and what team do you think out of this draft would be the strongest and win the team title? Thanks again for watching, guys. Feel free to subscribe, follow us on social media, like, share, do whatever you want. Uh, we've got some other cool videos coming, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you next time.